Welcome everyone, or welcome back. I know some of y'all have been waiting for this video, sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, I ended up having some technical difficulties that really halted my ability to make videos. Uh, so for a few weeks there, it was a little touch and go. I'm not one to uh, pull the whole Mercury and Retrograde card, but boy, pretty much every piece of tech that I use to do this, the camera, mic, my laptop, my iPad that I do the editing on, like everything had some kind of catastrophic failure in some way that took a long time to remedy, like one after the other. It was like a domino of nonsense, but that's not why we're here. All those things have been fixed and we are here to talk about some guitar learning programs, namely Guitar Super System, Fender Play, and of course the Gibson app. For anyone who didn't watch my impressions video, you can go ahead and click the card and give that a look, which I would recommend if you're interested in Guitar Super System specifically, because uh, I'm not going to get super in-depth in this video, in that app, because a lot of my opinions have stayed the same. This video in particular will be more about Fender Play, the Gibson app, and how they sort of compare. But if you don't want to go and leave this video to watch another video first, let me at least give you the cliff notes. As seen previously, I tried out the one-week free trial of the newly revamped and renovated guitar super system as uh, advertised by Tyler Larson of the Music Is Win channel, very popular music and uh, guitar-based YouTube channel. And I found it to be mostly favorable. Lots of useful, easy to follow along content. The app was easy to navigate. All in all, it was good. But I knew that there were other apps available that also tried to teach guitar, so to have some kind of point of reference, uh, I wanted to test those out as well. Namely from Fender, and Gibson. Fender Play and then Gibson, it's just it's just Gibson. It's the Gibson app. So here we finally are, the Battle Royale, the ultimate showdown. Let's find out who takes home the crown. I decided to critique each experience using these five metrics. One, price. How much is this shit gonna cost me? Number two, content. Is there enough useful content for beginner, intermediate, and advanced players? Number three, quality of content. Just because the content is there doesn't mean it's any good. Do I actually learn what I need from it, or is it just a confusing mess? Number four, ease of use. This is more about sort of the technical aspects of the app. Was I able to navigate it fine and find the things that I needed? Remember that these are online courses, so navigating through the lessons is completely reliant on my ability to understand the user interface. Doesn't matter how much or how good the content is if I can't find it or feel overwhelmed by too much bloat. And number five, overall enjoyability. Seems trivial, but it's not. Nothing halts a learning experience more than disengagement. If the program isn't fun, if it's a pain to use, if it's inconvenient in any way, it could derail the whole experience. Remember, the lessons are entirely reliant on your participation and what incentive do you have to consistently return to something that you don't find enjoyable. It could be full of the most golden of guitar secrets, techniques only heard in whispers, passed down from the gods of rock to only a select few who are worthy. But if learning them's a pain in the ass, then I guess I'm not learning them. So, with this in mind, let's get into it. So I wanted to start with price at number one. The reason being is because I made some egregious errors in my impressions video regarding the price of these things. As far as Guitar Super System is concerned, I got that right. But I had remarked that the $10 a month price was the only thing I wasn't quite sure about. Especially if the other apps cost a similar amount. Which I thought they did. I remember some time ago, I tried out a free trial for Fender Play, didn't get super into it, but I remember at that time, the price was $9.99 a month if I had decided to continue. But even so, as I was editing the impressions video, I decided I should go check, and so I did. Quick Google search and bam, there it is. $9.99 a month. Very cool. Very good. Come to find out, when I go to get the subscription, it's now $20 a month. The source of that Google search answer, I clicked on the link and looked at the article, it was written in early 2022. So sometime very recently, Fender had decided to double the price of this service. So I'm way off base now. I mean, it's, it's literally the reason that this video exists. I thought that, you know, for 10 bucks a month for Guitar Super System, Fender plays the same price and it you know, on the service looks like it has so much more. It's the only reason I even bothered to do this comparison. And it's already kind of moot because Fender Play has doubled in price, $20 a month. This puts it right in line with the Gibson app, which is also $20 a month. Uh, in the impressions video, I had said that it was 15. That was also based on incorrect and outdated information. Yikes, I'm sorry. 
So right off the bat, Guitar Super System whoops those other two in terms of price, 10 bucks monthly or $60 for an annual subscription, which brings it down to like five bucks a month. Fender Play is $20 monthly or $150 for the year, marketed as $12.50 monthly should you go for the annual subscription and Gibson is also $20 a month or $120 a year 10 bucks a month if if you go yearly so Fender actually ends up being the most expensive same monthly price as Gibson but Gibson at least gives you a little extra discount should you decide to go for the yearly subscription speaking of subscriptions make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel usually I don't bother with this till the end uh, but if you've clicked this video then clearly you're interested in guitar and music discussion, maybe some music history. Mm -hmm. Go find it here on this channel. Go check out some of the other vids. Subscribe. Even if you're not interested, go ahead and do it anyway. Honestly, how many other channels are sitting in your sub list that you don't even watch anymore? Throw me in there, man. Help me out. Just do me a solid and help a blossoming channel bloom, please. Anyway, back to it. I actually think that all three of these are overpriced, and I'll get into that more towards the end of the video. Uh, but that amount that Fender and Gibson are asking are especially egregious. So by default, Guitar Super System wins out over here. Next, let's talk about content. All three apps host a range of educational content, both about how to play guitar in general, as well as more advanced music theory. Guitar Super System is all about this. From discussing theory to learning scales and modes and even exotic scales, tips, tricks, tools, the focus of the app is all learning guitar. Even things other than the playing aspect. There's a whole series of videos about gear, what you know, different pedal effects do, how you might use them, and stuff like that. It's good stuff. Pretty basic, but it, still good. However, the Fender and Gibson app have quite a bit more. Let's start with Fender. Like I said, just having way more resources to work with, uh, the Fender app is chock full of stuff. There are articles you can read, there's videos uh, by a host of different guitarists, there's songs you can learn and practice. The learning portion you can see on the bottom there is My Path. Upon clicking this, you're asked to select the instrument you're trying to learn. Acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass, or ukulele. Once you've selected that, you'll be given some genre choices to shape your learning experience. For electric and acoustic guitar, you can pick from rock, blues, pop, R&B slash soul, country, and folk. Bass, you can pick rock or funk. I guess that's all a bass can do. And for ukulele, you can choose ukulele. There is but one path for the ukulele player. It is a dark path and it's a lonesome path. But for those who are called to it, there can be no other way. This puts you on a guided course tailored to your preferences. Each lesson usually works the same way. You start with a video of a guitarist explaining what it is you'll be learning, as well as they give you a little exercise to put into practice. That is followed by practice mode to practice what they just gave you and sometimes but not always there's a feedback mode where it'll grade you on how you did on the thing you were given to practice you can see on the video portions we have these buttons all along the bottom info gives you a short description of what the lesson is about tabs will show you the tabs for whatever exercise you'll be practicing and you can make that full screen if you want that's nifty feedback which I don't know what it does I never once got it to work not a single time ever I kept trying I kept trying never worked. And then related, which shows you other videos that talk about similar things to the video you are currently watching. Uh, and tools, which is essentially just an advertisement for the Fender Tune app. So, you know, you can tune your guitar. Okay. The lesson path will be interspersed with some songs to learn to keep things interesting. Typically, they're simplified versions of the song with only one specific part to make sure, uh, you know, not to overwhelm you, but still make you feel like you're making progress. The Gibson app is similar in approach but wildly different in execution. It also puts you on a guided path to learn the basics. Each segment will also usually start with a video of a guitarist explaining what it is you'll be learning, but that's just the setup for the main portion, which is the practice portion, which happens like some kind of rock band slash guitar hero-esque slider game uh, that you could play along with. You can select different musical genres as well, typically rock, metal, blues, classical, pop, or folk. The lessons are the same, it just changes the style of the song that you'll be playing along to. So if you want extra practice on a thing, you could go back and 
practice that same thing again, but in the other genres, just so it doesn't get super stale and you can switch it up a little bit. There is also here a selection of songs that you can learn to play. While neither Fender Play or the Gibson app have a particularly vast or eclectic library, I would definitely say that Fender has more. I mean, look at the 90s rock section from the Gibson app. Yep. I'm pretty sure those are all the songs from the 90s. Achy Breaky Heart, sweet! And extra content abounds in terms of shows from Gibson TV all being available. Uh, I found a lot of this stuff actually very interesting and I was excited to watch it. Initially I thought this is uh, probably not a good thing because it distracts from learning, but I actually found it to be kind of the opposite. When I'd get tired of practicing, I'd go check out the Gibson TV stuff and I would actually put me in the mood to go and pick the guitar back up and get playing again. So it sounds like Guitar Super System is pretty bare bones comparatively and an argument can be made that it is, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the quality of said content. We're gonna spend a lot of time here. Again, I'm gonna start with Fender Play. When I first got into the app, right, and I saw this big prominently featured video, minor versus minor seventh chords. I thought, cool, let's check that out. I, I know seventh chords, but I don't know why they're seventh chords. I don't know the musical rules behind them. So, you know, let's go ahead and click this and learn a, learn a little something. When I clicked it, I was taken to a two minute video that seemed like a snippet out of a podcast being done over Zoom. And there's a guy who just shows how to play E7 minor and A7 minor. He shows you how to play those two chords, just those two examples. And absolutely no discussion of what makes them seventh chords, what that means, how you might do this with other chords or keys or what have you. The video would be pretty useless to a beginner because there's nothing really to be gained from it. And if you're a little more advanced and you're already kind of familiar with seventh chords, like I said, I am, but only in a sense of like, you know, I know shapes, That's but I don't know the deeper sort of musical theory behind that. And this video gave me none of that. Not that this particular video had to give me that. It's just, it was titled minor versus minor seven. So I thought I would learn a little bit about minor seventh chords, but I didn't. I got a clip of a guy talking about E minor seven and A minor seven and nothing else. Unless you wanted to learn those two chords specifically, that's very useless to everyone, to anyone who would click on it. There's no point to watch that. And if you did want to learn those two chords specifically for whatever reason, and nothing else, uh, you don't have to pay 20 bucks a month to do it. You can go anywhere, you can get anywhere online to find that information, it's very easy. Like it's the biggest and most prominently featured video on the front page, the first thing that greeted my eyes as I opened the app and it's, com <laughs> it's a complete waste of time. And honestly, the app is just full of uninteresting fluff like that. Like not to say it's all bad, I, you know, I don't wanna act like everything is garbage, but I can say that there really wasn't any one particular video that I would click on and thought like, oh yeah, I'm glad I clicked on that. I learned so much. Not, not once did I have that feeling. But that's not really, you know, why you're there, in my opinion. It's to immerse yourself in a curated learning environment to broaden your guitar knowledge and ability. So I would, I would consider all this other stuff just kind of bonus, even if it's not very good, and concern myself mostly with the, the content that's on the My Path portion and, you know, learning songs. Because that's, that's what is actively teaching you the guitar on this particular platform. So some positives about the Fender Play experience. It is very beginner friendly. If you are someone who has never played or even held the instrument before, maybe you're a little intimidated by how much there is to learn. This might be a good app to start with, honestly, because it absolutely treats each and every lesson as if you're not expected to know anything beforehand. This is important because it's really easy to forget just how alien getting your hands on a guitar is when you're first starting out. You get used to things and you don't think about them as much anymore, and certain things seem so obvious and so standard that you might skip them when explaining the instrument to somebody who's new. I mention this because it will become relevant once I start talking about Guitar Super System again, but we're not, we're not there quite yet. Now on the other side of the coin, I personally found this to be pretty frustrating. The tone of every video is so professional, which sounds nice, it sounds like that's how it should be, but honestly, it just feels kind of sterile and bland. If you're not a total beginner, you will probably not appreciate being spoken to like you're an idiot constantly. I mean, I might. I might be an idiot constantly, but you ain't gotta talk to me like that. In this exercise, we're going to practice fret hand string muting.
In this lesson, we'll learn the E minor pentatonic. In this lesson, we'll learn the E minor. In this lesson, we'll learn how to play. In this lesson, we're going to find all the natural notes. We're going to look at the notes that fall between. Let's learn the notes on the E and. In this lesson. In this lesson. In this lesson. It's every video. Everyone presents the same, has the same personality, the same fake smile. It's really pointless to switch up the hosts because they're all essentially the same person. I'd say it reminds me of watching children's programming, children's television, but honestly, I feel like even Steve from Blue's Clues gave me more agency. Steve's not even on Blue's Clues anymore, is he, right? Who's it now? Josh. Who's Josh? Oh, Josh plays guitar. I like Josh. And it even goes to the other things. As I said, I never got the feedback function to work, not, not even once. Anytime I clicked on the related tab, I didn't really find any of the other videos to be particularly interesting or worth deviating from what I was already doing, especially because whatever vid you jump to continues to treat you like a novice and it just feels like you're learning the same things over and over again. And the tool button, as I said before, it just tells you to go and download the Fender Tune app. What's more annoying is even if you actually do go and download the Fender Tune app, when when you go to the tools tab and click open, it just brings you straight to the app store and you can open it from the app store. It doesn't open the other app. Why the hell? What's the point of having the stupid tools tab there if all it does is bring me to the app store? It doesn't give me tools at all. Like yeah, Guitar Super System doesn't have an in-app tuner, but you know, because of that, it doesn't advertise that it does. It doesn't lie to you about it. <laughs> Back to those buttons, I, I like that tabs are there, but even that becomes kind of a problem when you're trying to learn songs. The way that this app teaches you how to play songs is, and I'm talking about like a song proper, I'm not talking about when you're on the My Path and it's teaching you kind of a simple version of a, of a song just to kind of help practice. I'm talking about if you really want to actually learn of a song proper. This is what it does. First, you watch a long ass video of someone explaining how to play it, the whole damn thing. It takes forever and it's boring and it's unengaging. So naturally, I stop paying attention and I just start looking at the tabs and trying to do it for myself. So the tabs end up kind of distracting from me watching the video. But since there's a person talking and playing guitar at the same time, it really distracts from me being able to read the tabs. So the tabs distract from the lesson and the lesson distracts from the tabs. Typically, I found myself just saying screw it and skipping the video altogether and just going straight to the practice portion so I could just play along with the tabs and not deal with the boring video at all. Which at that point, it's like, why am I not just looking up tabs online? Why did I waste money on Fender Play to make playing tabs just harder for me and less convenient? Why did I do that? As far as learning songs go, actually, I found the Gibson app, believe it or not, to be much better at teaching you uh, what few songs that they have. The reason is because they break the song down into little parts. They give you one part, show you what you need to know, they let you practice it, nice and slow, then a little faster, then a little faster, and then at the proper tempo of the actual song, and then once you got that down, it takes you to the next part, and you learn how to do that, and it breaks the song into this little path that you can work your way down, and at the end, you put it all together. I was surprised how effective this was, and I actually enjoyed using it for the song learning purposes. And the Gibson app has a built-in tuner. It's just there in the app. You click on it, and it brings you to the tuner, and then you can go back to your stuff without having to go into a separate app. Fender. Ain't that novel? Unfortunately, that is, that's most of the praise I have for the Gibson app. I really wanted to like this one because the lessons do have a more laid back feel than the Fender ones. The whole atmosphere of the app just feels a bit cooler and more rock and roll, which if that's not your aesthetic, then that might actually be a negative for you, but I like it. The thing is, the whole mini game type practice style is not awesome. At first I thought it was fun, I thought it was neat, and I applauded Gibson for doing something kind of different here. The problem is, it feels less like you're learning guitar and more like you're learning how to play this little game thing. I found myself just absolutely failing at fairly simple things, things that I assuredly have the ability to play, because I was concentrating more on trying to appease this, the, the rules of this little mini game than I was on actually playing. Or, or the guitar itself. Like you have to master this practice style before you can even start paying attention to the guitar. If you're starting from scratch, maybe it's easier, but it threw me for a loop pretty quick. This also makes it impossible to jump around. At least in the Fender app or Guitar Super System, if you're a more advanced player and you don't want to waste your time on the, the beginning lessons, you don't have to. You just jump straight to whatever was interesting to you. But because of this particular teaching method in the Gibson app, you just can't. Unless you've taken the time to get very comfortable with it, you will not be able to play along with the advanced stuff. Another issue specifically about this is that it gives you tunnel vision. Anyone around my age, you may remember the days when Guitar Hero 
superhero was huge and you would sit down and you'd play that for maybe way too long in one sitting and then you'd look away from the TV and everything would just like start waving and wobbling. Y'all remember that? Yeah, that happens on the Gibson app. They try to sneakily advise around it with a little warning that says, short but consistent sessions over time are better than long sessions. But yeah, it really doesn't take that long to start bugging your eyes out. It happened to me pretty quick. I kept having to take breaks, not because I didn't want to learn or because I wasn't having fun, but because I felt like I was high. As for the other stuff, the other content, the Gibson TV content uh, and things like that much as I liked it it's all on the YouTube channel I'll put a link in the description the Gibson TV YouTube it's all there when the app is trying to entice you to get the subscription and it lists a bunch of stuff that you'll get if when you subscribe to the premium membership you can try it out free for a while it advertises that there's exclusive Gibson TV content on the app but I didn't find it <laughs> I don't there's a lot, so maybe there is. Maybe there's a video here or there that you can't find on YouTube, but most of it's just on YouTube. So that means a lot of the extra content is just pointless. And I assume it's probably the same on the fact. I didn't check the Fender YouTube channel, but it's probably the same. There's also a section where you can use the app as if it's an amp, get different sounds and stuff, but in order to use it, it requires you to use plug-in headphones, and I don't have those. So I couldn't use that. So a surprising amount of negativity for these platforms. Does that immediately push Guitar Super System to the front? Almost, but not exactly. And then let me explain. Guitar Super System, and really this is one of my few complaints about it. It's not super beginner friendly. And by that I mean it might not be the best choice for someone who's absolutely never picked up a guitar before. If you already know how to play a little bit, but you're still starting out, then you're good. You'll do well in this app, you're fine. But if you've only just bought the instrument, have no idea about anything, then it might not be the place to start. You remember when I was talking about the Fender app, it did a good job, somewhat exhaustively, of making sure that beginners feel welcome. I said I'd be coming back to this with Guitar Super System. On here, there is a beginner's corner. If you're brand spanking new, obviously that's the place to start. That's to be the first place you'd click. While watching through the videos, I did feel like some things were missing, but I, I wasn't sure what. Remember, as I said, sometimes things become so obvious to you that you don't really think about them and how foreign they might be to newbies. And and this unfortunately does happen in the beginner's corner. To test this, I actually had my wife step in. She does not and has never played the guitar. I asked her to go through the beginner corner to see if she felt it was comprehensive enough for her to actually get the basics down and uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> for example, one of the first videos is about tuning your guitar. In the video, he doesn't actually tune the guitar. He puts a snark on it and says, this is what the string should sound like, but that's it. So of course I had to explain to her like the tuners, which way you turn them to get them to go up or down. I had to explain that you always want to tune up to a note versus down to a note just to help the string stay in tune. Heck, even how to read the tuner. I understand that reading a guitar tuner is not particularly complicated and I have full faith that my wife could have figured it out. But if the video is titled how to tune a guitar, it's literally the only expectation you have for that video is that it will show you how to tune a guitar. So the fact that it doesn't is a swing and a miss. And that really is, when it comes to the Guitar Super System, that is the only issue I find myself really running into in terms of content quality. Every once in a while, you'll hit somewhat of a roadblock because there's a dot that was not connected for you. It's something Tyler knows, I'm sure, and maybe he wasn't thinking about it when he was putting the video together, so you miss it and end up not really being sure what he's talking about. This is partly the reason why in-person lessons are probably the best way to go, to be honest with you, because you can ask those questions. But if that's not viable for you, understandable. The good news is, this is easily fixable. With proper feedback, Tyler can easily pop in new vids, replacement vids, explaining subjects more clearly or differently, add new practices, what have you. I know on, I didn't see this on the app, but I know on the website there's a forum that you can go post on, so if there's anything that isn't super clear or any lessons that you think need improvement, go on there and put it, and I'm sure, you know, Tyler can see it and fixes can be made. The issues that I have with Fender Play and the Gibson app are not really fixable. The flaws are specifically with how those apps chose to educate. To change that, you'd have to tear the whole damn thing down and start over. Guitar Super System is good as is, just need some spackle to fill up a few holes, that's it. That's doable. But as it stands right now, I would not recommend Guitar Super System for absolute, completely fresh, this is their first time holding the instrument guitar players. But if you're anywhere over that initial hump, it's pretty solid. All right, let's move along here. Let's get into ease of use. 
Again, like I said in the impressions video, Guitar Super System is pretty easy to navigate, easy to find things you want, everything is organized nicely, and you have the benefit of either using your online browser or your phone, tablet, or even on your TV. I use it on my Apple TV. That's convenience, baby. Fender Play is not as neatly organized, but I suppose this is mostly just because it has so much extra fluff. Now this isn't a huge deal because the meat and potatoes of what you're looking for in a guitar learning program is the is the curated path within the my my path section. So you don't really wander around too much. But should you decide to wander, it's not super intuitive. So like see here, I click skills and right up top there's videos about chords. And there's a bunch of videos about different ways to play the A chord in different positions. Each video is like 30 seconds long and it just shows you the fingering quick. Like what the hell am I supposed to do with this? It's not that useful. It's like if you were trying to learn how to build a shelf and, and you were just given a bunch of videos like, this is what a hammer is. This is what a nail is. This is what wood is. And it's like, cool, those are all things that you use when building a shelf, but I'm no closer to understanding how to build a goddamn shelf. Why did you drag me through all of this? Just give me the chord charts. It's so unnecessary. But anyway, my point, my point is, as I tried to bounce around the app, I found myself getting kind of lost. Most of the time I'd click on something and didn't really find it to be worth the time. So really I just stayed on the my path and didn't bother to explore too much. The app is not really explorer friendly. Not to me at least. It is also available on mobile, tablet, and browser, but no TV. So the Gibson app is laid out a little nicer than Fender Play, which again may just be because there's just less on offer in general. But as I said, it was pretty impossible to jump around since you're limited by your ability to play Rocksmith. So I barely explored because it was pointless. <laughs> also, since the crux of the experience is dependent on feedback, you know, you're playing along with this little game thing, it requires you to wear headphones. If you don't, then it won't grade you and give you the feedback and it won't let you advance on to the next lesson. I'm not sure why, but that's what it wants. So if you don't have a pair of those handy, that is an extra barrier to entry. You probably have headphones, but you might not always have your headphones around you when you're feeling inspired to play. You see what I mean? You have to like, now nah, I gotta go find where those are. Where did I last put them? And then my jeans pocket and my, my drawer. You know what I mean? It's just like an extra thing that you might not go and play now because ugh, I gotta get my headphones. You know what I mean? Those little barriers to entry are not good. Also, it's only available as an app. You cannot use it in browser, no TV, none of that. So mobile and tablet, that's it. Which makes the caveat of the amp thing that needs wired headphones in order to function just that much more annoying because we, we live in a world where there's an ever increasing amount of mobile devices that do not have a headphone jack. So you're limited to where you can use it and you're limited to how you can use it. I, just, I, just, I don't love that. And lastly, overall enjoyability. Guitar Super System is not a program filled with thrills or frills. It really only attempts one thing, and that is to broaden your understanding of the instrument for players who genuinely want to learn without being talked down to. It may not do it perfectly across the board, but it certainly does not do it poorly. I like using it. I like learning from Tyler, especially compared to the blandness of Fender Play. It's like back in the day and you're learning from your best friend's cool older brother who's home from college that weekend, decided to show you a thing or two about guitar. That's how it feels. That being said, I found Fender Play to be the least enjoyable. I didn't like exploring the app. I didn't find the bonus content all that interesting or useful. The My Path section was full of repetition and not super enticing. I wasn't really drawn to continue on it. Not to say that it wasn't educational, I just felt like a chore to do every single time. And learning the songs felt pointless because like I said, I'd had just have a better time just looking up the tabs myself. I've looked around at what some other people have said about Fender Play, and it seems like I'm in the minority here. I see a lot of positive things, but I I don't know. I, it did not gel with me. <laughs> the Gibson app, for all the shit that I gave it, I actually did sort of enjoy. I couldn't recommend spending money on it. <laughs> And I didn't think it was super useful as an educational tool just for the way it is. And like I said, most of the bonus content stuff is on YouTube anyway for free. But it was much easier and more fun to learn how to play songs on the Gibson app versus Fender Play. Remember the whole the whole rock band rocksmith style thing, I, I did say it was fun at first, and it does stay fun when you're trying to learn how to play songs that you're interested in, because it takes it slow, and you can even slow it down more if you need to. The problem is utilizing it to learn the instrument proper, to use it as an education tool to learn the guitar sucks.
Honestly, out of the three of these, I do have to say that Guitar Super System is the one I'd most likely continue with. It's sleek and easy to navigate, it's got lots of good advanced stuff explained in a fairly digestible way, it's not overly bloated with a bunch of useless fluff, and it's half the price. Well yeah, it ain't perfect, you could use a little work, it's work that can be done. Any fix that's needed is pretty doable. Unless you hate this guy, and then I don't know what to, t I don't know what to tell you, you're stuck with him. That would in fact be a structural problem with the whole service. But it, then I don't know why you'd even bother though. Anyway, let me circle back real quick to price. I did state at the beginning of the video that I still thought Guitar Super System was overpriced, which compared to these other two offerings might sound laughable. But to be honest, when I initially criticized the price point, I wasn't really in comparison to those two other apps. It was in comparison to the countless other subscriptions that are ruling our lives. We live in an age where everything needs a subscription. You pay for several different streaming platforms every month. Disney Plus is eight bucks a month. Discovery Plus is only five bucks a month. Mr. Larson, you gonna look me in the eye and tell me that your service is worth more than a place where I can watch all 42 seasons of Diners, Drivers, and Dives? That's 15 years of flavor town, baby. Yeah, you're right. But you see what I'm saying? Video games need subscriptions. First for your online service, and then some games themselves, individually, require a subscription. Your home security system needs a subscription with Ring or whatever else. Microsoft Office runs on a subscription model. You can't just pay for things anymore. You can't just buy things. Everything is leased to you. You go on the App Store and you have to pay a monthly fee for journals, calendars, task lists, fucking calculators, the list goes on. Your life is loaded with stupid ass subscriptions now. So in a vacuum, sure, I'd say 10 bucks a month, that's not the worst, but we are well past that. Many of us are loaded up with these monthly fees, and considering the yearly purchase is only 60 bucks, cutting it right in half, I feel like the sweet spot would be closer to $7.99 per month. Tyler, I don't know if you're watching this, doubt it, but if you are, that is my suggestion to you. Eight bucks a month would be $96 for a year, so there would still be a considerable savings incentive to go for that annual purchase if that's what you're trying to push people towards. But for people who can only afford month by month, $7.99 is a much more justifiable commitment than $9.99. And honestly, I'm pretty sure what you'd lose on the two bucks per sub, you would probably gain back in just more subs. I'm not a business expert, obviously. I don't know what your margins are. I don't know what it costs to put this together. But I do know myself as an average consumer, and I would be more excited to pull the trigger on $7.99 than I would be for $9.99. It's not a big difference, but psychologically something happens. Anyway, my friends, at the end of the day, these were my opinions and views. Do keep in mind that all of these services do offer free trials, so certainly I would encourage you to try them for yourself. I believe it's a one-week free trial for Guitar Super System, one-week free trial for Fender Play, and a two-week free trial for the Gibson app. Just make sure you remember to cancel those if you do not wish to continue them. Have you used any of these services? Please comment below if you agree with my takes on them or if you had a completely different experience, maybe it was better, maybe it was even worse on some of them. Do you agree that the price point maybe needs to be brought down a little bit on Guitar Super System? I'm interested to see if you're all comfortable with that $9.99 price point, especially with inflation going crazy. You can't be lowering prices on things right now in the United States, man. The dollar's worthless. Also, in my research, I found a handful of other learning services. Uh, it was Simply Guitar, Musician, True Fire, uh, I hadn't heard of these before, but during my research for this video, targeted advertising brought them to my attention. So thank you, not sponsored NordVPN, for not doing what you say you do. Anyway, if you'd like me to explore those as well, please leave a comment so I know that it's a topic of interest and if, you know, so I don't have to waste my time on it if you don't want to see it. But if you do, I'll do it for you. If you like this video, please strum the thumb, up picking or down picking, any which way, it's okay. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to come back. Thank you for coming back if you're already subscribed. Always good to see you. Thank you for coming out, and I'll see you at the next gig.